check out the, the GMC Acadia uh, dealer near the Wolf Tino covers the Giants all the time for the fan. Now this week, since Bob Pop is at the Olympics doing a boxing, uh, Paul will get to do the game, so he'll call the game on Channel 9 with, uh, with uh, Carl Banks coming up this week, so big week here for Paul Dottino, who you hear on the fan all the time, covering the Giants. Paul, welcome. How are you? Uh, great to be here, Mike. All right, Paul, let's, uh, you know, you're here every day for this stuff, so you can give us an update. Let's t touch on a couple of tricky positions. Goodness, the Giants Dottino's had like 75 espressos. Well, you know, Mike. they're really God. deep at corner, Mike. I've been telling people all along that the nine corners the Giants have right now in training camp, they're all going to play in NFL teams. I mean, it's going to be a shame that some of these guys won't be able to play with the Giants because they'd like to play with the Giants, but they're going to be guys cut, and they're going to land somewhere else. It's that deep. I've never seen the Giants' corner position go nine deep before, but you know what? They had six different corners go down with injury last season, and they were trying to piece things together during the middle of the year, and then obviously it, it all came together and they wound up winning the Super Bowl, but Jerry Reese during the offseason talked to his coaching staff and said, guys, I'm never going to let that happen again. We're going to stock up on corners going into next year so that we can never have enough. And that's what they did. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is true, but you want to have two good ones. And the question is, can Prince step up and be that good guy that they hope to play on that high level? That's really a big issue for them. Well, you know, he's a first-round pick, and so he's supposed to do that. Jerry Reese said the other day, I want him to play like a first-round pick. Because last year, remember, he broke his foot at his first-ever practice in August. Finally came back middle of the season. He wasn't ready. The injury wasn't fully healed. The kid was so far behind mentally that he could not instinctively play the game like we know he can. And so it was a disappointment to see him struggle like he did. Then the Giants actually had a bench in the last couple of weeks of the regular season because he just wasn't getting the job done. Now he comes to camp this year. He looks good. He sounds more confident. He's making a lot of plays. But I need to see the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and again, it's going to take a little time. But again, the advantage they have is the pass rush. And the Giants went out and just show you when you think of the Giants as being set up front, they go and get a guy like Sean Rogers, who is a absolute. I mean, it's a all around him. I mean, he's 350. If he might be 380, who knows by opening day? But he's like at least 350, 360. Sean Rogers is a big man. He's a beast, and he's been in this league now for 12 Never. years. Never. Uh, Three-time Pro Bowl player, and you Good know, player. Yeah, that's what he was. Last year was the first year he made the playoffs as a member of the New Orleans Saints, and he has driven. And this is one of the reasons he came to the Giants because he's driven to taste the postseason again, and he wants to have a legitimate chance to compete for a championship. He looked at the Giants and said, "Hey, this is a team that won the Super Bowl, has most of its guys back. I think I want to go there. Maybe they can do it again." And that's why he landed here. He did have to lose some weight when the Giants interviewed him. They said, "Hey." You better lose 20, 30 pounds, or you're not going to cut it here. And just, just walk out. Just don't even bother coming back. But he said, I'm going to do it. He did it. They signed him. And, you know, right now, with Chris Canty being on the shelf, and we don't know how long that's going to linger, Mike, there's a chance he might be on the PUP opening day, which means he'd have to miss the first six games of the season. The Giants needed that veteran experience to come in and help out Rocky Bernard right. and Lindell Joseph and Martin Austin. And they expect big things from Lindell Joseph, but still, he, having a guy like like uh, Sean Rogers to plug up the run is a very, very good thing. Uh, what do you see from the battle between Blackburn and Herzlick? Who's going to win? Well, for now, it's going to be Blackburn. He's the incumbent. He's the guy who's got all the smarts. He's got all the intangibles. The coaches love him, obviously. We all know his story. Oh, hey, yeah. The way he came off of his solo oh, last geez. year and helped his team make the playoffs, and then he had to pick in the Super Bowl. I mean, come on. Nate Nooch plays last year. But I'm going to tell you what, Mike. Over under for me, by game four or five, Herzlick's going to take that job away. Herzlick has just been so, so impressive during the spring and now the summer camps. At some point, he's going to be the starter. I'm going to say week four or five. Maybe it's a little bit longer than that, but this guy is going to crack the starting lineup sooner or later. He's got to do it. He's just too good. Who is the third receiver behind the big two? Well, see, now that's a real question mark right now because Nix is out there running around a little bit. He's doing a little bit more than he did the last couple of weeks. They're trying to get him ready. He's open by preseason game number three. He's going to be at least able to practice. That may be a little optimistic. The Giants are saying he might be ready for opening day. He might not. But here's how that affects the dominoes, Mike. If Nix is ready and Cruz is on the other side, then when the Giants go three wide, I think what they'd love to do is move Cruz back into the slot where he's most effective. And perhaps Dominic Hickson lines up wide, or even Ruben Randall might be able to steal that job away from Hickson and move Hickson down a spot 
if Randall shows he's how ready. Was Randall, Randall, how has Randall looked? Great. Looked very good. He looks really good. How has Jernigan looked? Very good. Last year he was a deer in headlights. Could not get anything done on the football field. Tried to catch a kickoff like this with his hands up in the air above his head. Can't do that. that that's not the way you play the game. He has come back now looking like somebody who has a clue and has done very, very well catching the ball in traffic. He's got the quicks and the jukes. So what it comes down to, Mike, is if if Nix is ready and Cruz goes slot, you could either have Barney, uh, uh, you could either have Hickson or Randall on the outside. If Nix is not ready, well, now you got to put Hickson outside. You probably got to put Cruz outside. Maybe you put Jernigan in the slot. Maybe he winds up being the number three guy. There's a lot of ways they can mix and match. What happens with Barton? Is he? Is he? Oh. Gonna, you know what? Is it over for him? I think the clock is finally at twelve. Well, no, they they said this is a big camp. So what have you seen from him this year? Uh, he makes occasional plays, but then doesn't make others. I'll tell you something, Mike. As I see it, five receiving spots are already taken on this team. There's only going to be room for one more, and that guy probably won't dress because they don't dress six. Right. Sometimes they'll dress four, right. sometimes five. The six receiver spots either going to go to Douglas, De Palma, Stanback, or Ramsey's Barton. Only one of those guys is going to make it as the six receiver. Now, you got a De Palma and a Douglas who could go practice squad, so the Giants don't necessarily have to cut those guys. They can still keep them around. Stanback, I don't believe, is practice squad eligible, and no, no, nor is Barton. I think Barton's run out of time, quite frankly, because he doesn't play specials. That also kills you. You have to play specials. If you get, otherwise, you're not going to dress. you got to give him a reason to bring you to the game. If, if, otherwise, you're not going to be in the game. Right, how has David Wilson looked? David Wilson has great quicks, but there are still unanswered questions about him. Look, when they drafted him, Tom Coughlin admitted there were some ball security issues with him in college. We don't know about that yet because he hasn't been hit. He hasn't been in the game. So we have to see how he does when he starts playing preseason games about holding the ball. We also have to see if he's going to stop dancing. He loves to dance. He's got great quicks and great jukes. The problem is, he's making too many cuts. And when you get to a game, you can't make that fifth cut because by the third cut, they tackle you for a loss. You know that, Mike. Who's the, who's the, we're talking about Paul Tino. Uh, who's the rookie who has kind of lit up camp this year? Who's the guy who has looked really good? To me, it's Randall. Randall's been good. Ru Ruben Randall is pro ready, as Jerry Reese likes to say. Uh, he's got all the tools. He's so smooth out there. He really does look like a key mix in terms of his play. Uh, the problem with him right now is that at rookie minicamp, they gave him one position to learn. When they got up to Albany, they said, you are all three receiver positions. Try to learn all three of them. He's a bit overwhelmed right now. Because remember, at LSU, they're primarily a running attack. And then even when they did throw the ball, they didn't have any quarterbacks who could get it to him. So he's had very little experience at a real high efficiency, high octane passing attack. And so this is quite a big jump for him, but I think physically he's the rookie that has stood out the most. Wilson's quicks just make your jaw drop. But again, the other thing about Wilson, you know, if you're going to play in the Giants' backfield, you better be able to pick up a blitz Got because you well, can't have Eli Manning on the ground. Anybody's backfield these days, you have to be able to pick up a You have to pick up a blitz. You don't pick up a blitz, you don't play. I yeah. mean, with any good quarterback, I mean, that has to be the case. So if he doesn't pick up Looks going to be on the bench for sure. So, I mean, that, that's a lot of issues with him, there's no question. And Bradshaw will be good, but he'll get nicked up because he just runs, you know, he gets hit so many times that, you know, a guy like him is going to always be hurt. A little guy who, who takes a beating and who delivers a beating. I mean, he really does. What do you think about the offensive line uh, as far as the idea of, I don't worry about the going on the right side. I really don't. I worry about the left side solidifying and Beatty finally being the guy that you can count on all the time. Is Beatty at that position? Yet. It's time, you know. It like, is time. Like Goplin said, it's time. It is time. You know, he started uh, about 10 games at left tackle so far over the last couple of years, and he's coming off that detached retina surgery. They're going to give him a shield. He says the eye is fine, and that's not the problem. He's going to be okay with that. But he's got this sporadic back problem, a little sciatica going down the back of his back. That's an issue. They don't want to keep shuffling guys. No. And especially at the left tackle. And for, uh, especially at left tackle. Now, They've been giving him some time off during training camp because, quite frankly, his back can't tolerate it. How's he going to hold up over 16 games? That's an issue, Mike, and I'll tell you something else that's an issue. Even if Will Beatty is healthy, to me, he's a finesse left tackle. I like maulers. I like mashers. I like punch him in the mouth guys. And unless Will Beatty starts getting that feistiness about him, I think he's going to have some trouble. Do they have a young, I mean, the logical thing is move Deal back again which they've tried to, to get away from right. for three times now. 
and they have, and they always want to go and back the deal. Do they have a young guy here who could step in that maybe they can leave deal alone at right tackle? Second year pro James Brewer is here, but I don't think very highly of him. I don't think he's ready. I think he's very, very raw. I don't think he could step in. Sean Locklear, the veteran who played for many years with the Seattle sure. Seahawks, yeah. and then last year with the Redskins as a backup, is here. He is right now the third tackle. He's your emergency guy. He would be. And he's a pro. He's well, been around a long time. In the past, there's been Whitfield, there's been yeah. Andrews. Right. You've got to have one of those guys. You have to have one. And he's that guy right now, but. So the Giants. Put the back to the left tackle. You think so? I mean, they don't want to do that, but they, they don't want to. They could wind up doing it again. They don't want to. Do that. You know, listen, you got to protect the Eli's blind side. You got to put someone there you can depend on, and you know you put the LA, you can leave alone. You know, you know he can leave alone. He's going to no, do the job. But all right. I think what they would do if Beatty went down is probably try to get by with Locklear and see if he's got the, the guile to make it they happen. They do have problems at left tackle last year. Over-matched. And you and I both know and that. He's like killed him in a NFC Championship. Killed I mean, last year they blamed it on the injuries and being new late and, and not arriving until late, and then the injuries that he had. Does he look like he's ready to step in and be the guy? I'm going to duck that one, Mike, because you can't really tell about the trenches until you see these guys in games. You know, these practices right now are so no. light. I call them practice light because they're not doing anything. So how can you really but tell you much get about the it? idea that they feel comfortable now yes. with the continuity with them and everything? They believe they're going to get what they paid for when they brought him in last offseason from the 49ers. We didn't see that because, A, like you said, he came in late, had a variety of injuries, yeah. was, was just not the right player. Now, is he right now? It looks like it. He says he is, but we got to see it. No, you have to say that's a big question on that. There's a couple of questions on that line now. When you're talking about left tackle still being a question, and you still question the center, that's a lot to question on the offensive line, really. That's two out of five positions. Yeah, uh, and, and listen, in this division where you're going to see very good pass rushes, or, you know, when you talk about the Eagles and the Cowboys, you're going to see very good pass rushes. That makes it very it's difficult. Good pass rushes. Really. The one that scares me. A guy like Dale <laughs> Wilson, if he's going to get in there, has to know how to pick up the pressure, and you also need to know that your tight ends which is another position you got to talk about because you know Jake Ballard is with the Patriots. Right. You know, is it going to be sound like Well, Bennett gives him a blocker anyway. He does give him a good blocker. As of now, it's interesting. They're running with Pasco as the starter at the moment. I don't know how long that's going to hold. Well, Bennett's a better blocker, so he's a good blocker. He's he is. He's a very good blocker. Problem with Bennett right now, he's got a little bit of a flaky attitude. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why they only signed him to a one-year contract because if the greatest tight ends coach in the world, Mike Polk, can't bring it out of him, then he'll be gone after one season. That's why he got a one-year deal. How, how many times you see a veteran free agent come in like that with a one-year deal? Not very often, but the Giants want Bennett to prove something to them, and he's going to get a chance. He's going to get a chance, and again, I mean, uh, there's a guy who can be very good at the point of attack. So I he can think be. it'll be interesting to see. We'll talk with Paul Latino. Who's the newcomer who could have an impact on specials? Is there anybody you see running around out there who looks like he could be a special teams contributor for them this year? Well, you know what's scary is that, uh, you know, when watching the kick returns, they've had Hickson back there, they've had Randall back there, they've had Jernigan back there. Right. Uh, personally, if it were me, I'd want to see Jernigan win the job. I would think so. Okay, but, again, after what happened last year, He's you have to have doubts. Hey. Listen, it's critical. You got you got ball security is the whole thing. You know, you know, you worry about the coming forward after that. You know? Well, uh, David Wilson returned some kicks in college. In fact, had two kickoff returns for a touchdown uh, during one of his uh, college seasons. So he's capable of doing it as well. But at this point, that's the one position, Mike. If you said to me, Paul, what's the one position where you really don't know the answer? You don't have any real strong possibilities. It would be in the kick return. Interesting. Which, for the Giants, has been something that has not been a positive for a long time. I mean, they have had a lot of trouble returning punts and kicks. Hickson was really good a few years ago. He 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 blew out his ACL. He was good. And now, here he is. And by the way, he's having a great camp. Mike, I have to tell you, look, I'm covering the Giants now. I'm in my 30th straight straight season. There are very few guys who you root for more than Dominic Hickson when you see him out there. Because he is the ultimate teammate. He is the ultimate good guy. He is the ultimate hard worker. Gives you 250% on every snap, even if it's only in practice. And it's great to see him back after two ACL surgeries. He looks terrific. I'm talking about Paul, the team. I remember Paul been doing a game with uh, with uh, Banks on uh, Friday night when they played Jacksonville on Channel 9. Who is, so I guess the guy who people will know who is in trouble and not making the team is Barton. Do you think he's the most likely guy to get sent back in here? Yes. Yes, I do. Of the people who are, are recognizable, right. Barton would be that guy in my mind. Is there anybody else on that list right now? Anybody who's a bit of a name who's in some trouble here? I really don't think so, Mike, because 
you know, you're looking at a team that won the Super Bowl and has virtually every starter back on both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's, not, it's a very, it's a team that doesn't have a lot of questions. It really doesn't. No. Yeah, Most of the questions, if any, are in the depth chart. People still think the Giants aren't going to be good. Minus seven. You know you're going to get a good number. You know you're going to have to sometimes get taxed. A bunch of injuries. You got all our main guys back healthy. So you got to build some depth here. And you got to hope you build some quality depth. And you got to do that with young guys. I will tell you one veteran who potentially could have been in trouble, but because the younger guys aren't necessarily seizing the spot, would have been DJ Ware, yep. who's been around now for five years, right. been on two Super Bowl teams, and never really blossomed and showed what he could do on the field. He can block, though. That's the only He's thing never, that's never been keeping him on a team. But right now, if you look at the questions that Wilson has, because he's a rookie and inexperienced, and we know there are doubts, Darrell Scott last year showed he had trouble with ball security, showed he had trouble picking up the blitz. And even though he's got great speed, he's on the smaller side, mm -hmm. and you don't trust him back there. So because I don't know if either one of those young guys is ready to take DJ Ware's spot, I think DJ Ware's probably going to be safe. So, uh, yeah, I would, you know, I, who would be the more logical guy there? I mean, you know, is uh, Andre Brown a guy who could uh, no. supplant? I mean, is that a guy you looked at and say possibly could supplant him? I would say no. Uh, is it possible? I suppose if they're looking at salary cap, because obviously Brown's making a lot less money than DJ Ware is. Right. But right now, they're running with Bradshaw as the starter. Wilson is kind of the backup tailback, and uh, DJ Ware is the third down back as it stands now. And that's because of all the Giants running backs, he's the stockiest and the bulkiest in terms of picking up the extra pressure. And they know that on third down, people are going to be sending guys after Eli, and they want Ware back there to help out the quarterback. One more guy who I, I know that they were hoping would make a jump this year and could be a, a, a key guy is Marvin Austin. How has Marvin Austin been so far? You know, uh, he came into the offseason program initially way overweight, and the coaches ripped into him and said, hey, what do you think you're doing? You haven't played football in two years, and now you come in after the Super Bowl and you've been enjoying the banquet circuit, you're overweight. Well, you really think you belong in this team? They just shredded him. He went on a crazy, crazy conditioning program, lost like 25 pounds, has come to Albany looking really good, and has taken it seriously. Chris Candy kind of read him the riot act, too, and said, hey, kid, you got a lot of talent, yeah. but if you don't put it out on the field, you're going to get your butt cut. And so I think Marvin Austin's taking it seriously up here at Albany. I know they were hoping that he could because they thought he did have a lot of ability. Thank you, Paul. So uh, Friday night you'll see Paul with Carl Banks. Enjoy your game. Good luck with that. Thank and you. Thank you. We'll talk to Paul here on the fan back after this. 15-second pop.